Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. A degree in electrical engineering or computer engineering is a combination of two threads from a set of possible threads. The electrical engineering and computer engineering degrees differ in terms of what threads you can choose from. Here, I would like to talk about the circuit technology thread. This is one of the threads in the electrical engineering curriculum and is really a foundational area of electrical engineering. To help clarify what the circuit technology thread is about, I would like to contrast it with the highly related but distinct electronic devices thread. Electronic devices have interesting relationships between the voltages between their terminals and the currents that flow through them. Roughly speaking, you can think about the electronic devices thread as being about why transistors act the way they do. And you can think about the circuits thread as focusing on what you can do with the transistors given the fact that they act the way they do. We often think about using transistors as switches as being the realm of computer engineering. When we think about transistors as amplifiers, then we're in the realm of the circuit technology thread. Yes, you may think about your iPhone as a computer in your pocket, but that computer has to talk to the outside world, and the world we live in is fundamentally analog. So you have analog to digital converters that take your voice and radio signals from the environment and digitize those to turn into things that your phone can process. And your phone also has digital to analog converters that create the signals that go out of the antenna towards the wireless tower or that are run to a speaker so you can hear your friends. The electronic devices thread focuses on the underlying physics of why these devices act the way they do. Now, it combines very naturally with the circuit technology thread because understanding how the devices are working internally can give you insight into designing systems with those devices. But the circuit technology thread also naturally combines with all of the various other application threads in ECE. The electronic devices thread is natural for students who might want to invent new kinds of transistors or new kinds of sensors. The circuit technology thread operates at a higher level of abstraction, and there's places for circuits in every other field in electrical and computer engineering. And every company that needs electrical engineers at all in any way needs people who understand circuits. In terms of the kinds of classes we have in the thread, I teach a class called EC4450 Analog Circuits for Music Synthesis that covers various noise-making devices from the 1960s and 1970s. This is an example of a Moog ladder filter. This is one of the most famous circuits in music synthesis. And it's an example of a voltage-controlled filter, which is the sort of circuit that makes a synthesizer say I also teach a class called ECE4448, Guitar Amplification and Effects. This is mostly about circuits from the 40s and the 50s. It's premised on the idea that an electric guitar on its own is not a complete instrument. To think about it as an instrument, you need to include the amplifier, and you need to include the speakers, and you need to include whatever effects the musician is using. And this all forms a feedback loop, including the musician. Around two-thirds of the class discusses vacuum tube amplification circuits. And all of the vacuum tube circuits we look at in the class have transistor-based equivalents. This is an example of a fuzz phase circuit of the sort that Jimi Hendrix might have used. And this is basically a bog-standard transistor amplifier circuit with two transistors with feedback, which is the kind of circuit we look at in EC3400 analog electronics, which is a course that's required for the circuit's thread. Here it just happens to be pushed to extremes. Students interested in music might also be interested in ECE4445 audio engineering. This is kind of a confusing name for the course. It makes people think it's about using mixers and other studio recording equipment, but really it's a course on electroacoustics. So this is about how sound gets turned into electricity and vice versa. So a little bit about microphones, but most of the course is about speakers. 
This is taught by my colleague Alan Robinson, based on materials developed by Marshall Leach. This course develops electrical circuit models that are equivalent in behavior to the models of mechanical systems. Now, I'm sort of the odd man out among my colleagues in terms of my fascination with the technology of the ancients. My colleagues do research and teach classes that are on the cutting edge. Students interested in learning how to design analog integrated circuits can take ECE 4430. And in the new tape-out class started by my colleague Shaolan Lee, that's sponsored by Texas Instruments, students go through a two-semester sequence where in the first semester they design an integrated circuit and send it out for manufacturer, and in the second semester they test the circuits that they designed. While we're talking about the cutting edge, I wanted to mention EC6435, the neuromorphic analog VLSI circuits class taught by my colleague Jennifer Hassler. The circuit shown here, which consists of MOSFETs and capacitors, mimics the behavior of biological neurons. The Na subscripts stand for sodium, and the K subscripts stand for potassium. Dr. Hassler's research group has focused on the development of field programmable analog arrays. These contain some of the usual digital switching logic that you're accustomed to in a field programmable gate array, but they also add these analog blocks that contain elements like operational transconductance amplifiers, but also individual capacitors, transmission gates, and MOSFETs that you can hook together in flexible ways. If you're interested in learning more about these things, you can go to Dr. Hassler's website and download an Ubuntu image for a virtual box that contains the tool chain. And you don't need the actual hardware. You can experiment with the simulator. I've been documenting some of my own experiments with that simulator in a playlist on YouTube called Adventures in FPAAs. If you are a Georgia Tech student interested in chatting about the circuit technology thread, drop me a line. Or you can check out the web pages of some of my colleagues in the Electronic Design and Applications group and get in touch with faculty whose interests match yours. And I'll also include a link to the department website on the circuit technology thread in the description below.